And it is fear that holds you back. Because once you move into that learning and growing zone, you have to do something that's very hard for people to do. And that means anything you don't have that you wish you had, it's your fault. Most of the time when you tell people you deserve what you want and try it with somebody when the opportunity comes up in a conversation, say, well, you deserve what you want. Watch them explain to you why they don't. Watch them get very uncomfortable, right? For all the talk of entitlement attitude, and this is not entitlement attitude, but for all the talk of it, people in general don't believe they deserve anything. That's why the people that have the entitlement attitude want to be given something, not because they believe they deserve it, because they think they need it. And they don't believe that there's any way for them to have it unless somebody gives it to them. That person will be broke till the day that they die, even if they win the lottery. Even if their rich uncle uncle uh, dies and leaves them a fortune. You have got to move past that state. And you, it starts with understanding you do deserve what you want, but you have to do the work to get it. And if you don't have it, you haven't done the work yet. And I can understand why people fear accepting that. Because then it's going to cause a life review before you die. Before we get into the life review before you die, let's 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 tackle the five stages of grief with a terminal illness right now. Let's make sure that if ever it comes your way, that you are got a head start on dealing with it. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, here's the reality: you have a terminal illness right now. Every single person listening to me, every single person that ever will listen to me. After I'm dead, as long as my audios and videos stay around for people to listen to, you're listening to me now in the future, and I've been dead for 50 years, you have a terminal illness. I already know this. It's called life. I will die. You will die. We will all die. When you start believing all this science fantasy shit where you're going to get implanted into a computer or something, that's the bargaining stage of the five stages in grief because you're aware of your terminal illness, and you're already in a bargaining stage, right? Um. But what's really important is that we begin this process of wealth building with an understanding of something when it comes to destroying the poverty consciousness. Tim Cook said something really interesting in his discussion. He came back to it a few times. But you don't know what it's like here. And it was honestly that that led to this episode. That was where I want to talk about this on a podcast episode. And he wasn't saying it as in, I'm making an excuse. He was talking about how it's made as an excuse. You live in this small town. You know, maybe it's a coal town in Pennsylvania where there's no more coal. You know people, like one of my best friends, his dad, who had a good job, was a maintenance man in the projects and made $10 an hour. Now, $10 an hour was a lot more money in 1986 than it is today, but it wasn't a lot of money. But he was happy. And that was, that was the model of success. Man, he's got a 40-hour-a-week job with benefits, and he makes 10 bucks an hour fixing shitters in the project. 